y'all, it's Olivia. If you're new here, I make mostly fashion videos and I'd love you to go ahead and subscribe. So I'm also a current student at NC State University. I'm in fashion textile management and I'm currently in my back to school series. If you have any questions or anything you wanna see, please leave those down below. But today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about college. So all of the basics, I'm just gonna be going through everything like meal plans, housing, busing, how classes are, everything. And it's gonna be from my perspective, which is NC State specifically, but I would imagine that it's about the same throughout different colleges. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is meal plans because I had a few people asking about like the best things to eat in college and like uh, specifically for NC State, but meal plans in general typically work how you have like your student ID. This is the way it works at NC State. So during orientation, you'll get your student ID. It'll have your photo, your name, your student number, like that kind of stuff. And you use that to get into the dorm rooms and to use your meal plan. I think those are like the two main things. You also have to present it at like football games and stuff if you get a student ticket. So you just wanna always have that with you cause it's pretty important because you do need it to get into certain rooms and things. Also, if you're like in the College of Textiles, I know if you're in design, you can open the design lab after hours with your card. So your card is just really important, but you have your card and there are different packages of meal plans that you can get. So you can get a really big one or you can get a really small one. You can get a medium sized one. You just wanna kind of judge by how much you think you eat in a week. So it's good to kind of like track how much you eat before you go to school to try to figure out which meal plan works best for you and just kind of compare how much you eat and how much it'll offer for the semester. But you also have the opportunity at at least at NC State to switch your meal plan until like the end of September they'll give you like a time period to figure out if this meal plan is working right for you and if it'll still like align with you using all of the swipes and whatever by the end of the year so you have like a little grace period that you can kind of figure everything out but basically you'll be working with dining room swipe more like food court style swipes like not the dining halls but like the other restaurant swipes and then you'll have like a dining dollars system so freshman year I had the everyday plan and that was unlimited dining hall swipes so you could go to the dining hall as many times as you want and we have this is so horrible that I don't remember what they're called but we have one that's near Lee and then we have another one that's near Carmichael and we have another one that is only open to athletes in the afternoon you can go there for breakfast and lunch I think that is um case case you can go to for breakfast and lunch but the athletes are only allowed to have it for dinner and then we have like ones that are open to everyone on each end of the campus so the dining hall swipes I have had as many of those as I wanted for my everyday plan that I had freshman year and then I also had 12 food court swipes a week which I prefer the food court I'm just calling it that I don't know what it's actually called but like the food court style places more than I prefer the dining hall so for us that is Tuffy's which is like burgers and chicken tenders and stuff like that Los Lobos that's kind of like a Chipotle in a way we have Jason's Deli we have a pizza place those are that's what's in Tally and then in Tally we also have Tally Market which is like a little store that has ice cream it has our ice cream place in it as well and you can use at the little stores you, you can use dining dollars or meal swipes it just depends on what they allow there but if you use a meal swipe there that counts as like a food court meal swipe again so we have that and then we also have Starbucks in Tally and then we have PCJ, Port City Java. We have those all over campus. It's just another coffee place. And then if you go around a tally to the other side near Carmichael, we have One Earth and it has a whole bunch of different like more healthy style foods. It has like Mediterranean and like Japanese and like it has like a food bar. It has a whole bunch of food over there and they have specials. So sometimes I'll find things that I really like over there. So always remember to check them out. Sometimes they have weird hours, but that's what we have in tally. And then over in the atrium near DH Hill Library, we have Chick-fil-A, Smoothie U, we have like a Chinese or Japanese place, I think it's Chinese. We have a wrap place and then we have another pizza place that also has like pasta and stuff. On main campus, that's what you're picking from for your like food court meal swipes is what I called it. So I prefer to eat at those places over the dining hall and so for the meal plan I had freshman year that every day I only had 12 of those food court swipes a week and then I had like a hundred dining dollars I think so basically use dining dollars if let's say I've already used my 12th meal swipe 
for the food court that week but I still want to eat there I can pay for it with dining dollars instead or you're given certain like amounts of money that you're allowed to have per meal swipe so like in the food court places it's most likely like seven dollars and 25 cents or like roughly around in there it depends on where you're eating so let's say the salad at chick-fil-a is always like way more expensive than it should be so let's say I get a salad and it's and I get like a drink and whatever and it comes out to be like eight dollars and my meal swipe only covers 7.25 then I can pay that extra amount with my dining dollars so that's kind of like a breakdown of how the meal plan works for us at NC State at least so that's the plan I had freshman year now that I live in an apartment over on Centennial campus I have the smallest plan that you can have and I think that's like like 100 or 150 food court swipes and then like a hundred dining dollars as well and I prefer that because I don't really eat in the dining halls anyways but whenever you're living on on main campus and it's your first year and you're living in a dorm I think that the everyday plan is a good one for you so then you can always go to the dining hall if you need to and you'll never run out of swipes over there so if someone asked me specifically what I thought the best places to eat on campus were I definitely frequent Starbucks and Chick-fil-a the most I do really like one earth I just have a hard time getting over there during the hours that they're open I don't know why I think that they have where at hours they might not anymore but I feel like they used to so those are my favorite places I really liked the Chinese Japanese place in the atrium at first but then I got kind of sick of it over time I'll get Jason's deli whenever I just want a simple sandwich or something Tuffy's is okay I really ate that a lot back in the day too but it's like a go-to but it's like I'm not excited to go to it if you know what I mean uh, Los Lobos is okay it's not like the best Mexican place or Chipotle style place I've ever been but yeah, those are my go-tos. One more thing regarding meal plans. We have this app called Tap and Go, T-A-P-I-N-G-O, all one word. You guys need to download it if you're coming to stay or if you're going to the school that has it. It is a lifesaver, I promise. You just put in your information and it'll have your meal plan on it. And you can also add your debit card if you wanna add your debit card. And then you just go and you can order anything from any of the stores or like any of the restaurants on campus. And then they'll get it ready for you and it'll notify you whenever it's ready and you can just go by and pick it up and keep going on your way. So if you're like on your way to class and you want to tap and go Starbucks, our Starbucks used to be a mess but they remodeled it so it's great now and they have a whole section for like picking up and a whole section for ordering like they should. So it'll all be out there ready for you to grab and go. It's really convenient and I highly recommend that you download it. It's my favorite thing. It's making me think that maybe I should do a video on like the top 10 apps that you should download for college. So I think I'm going to do that too but yeah tap and go you guys need so now I wanted to talk a little bit about housing so at NC State you have to live on campus your first year as a freshman you have to live on campus so there are so many different styles that you guys can choose from of where to live and I'm gonna be doing a whole video about how to survive living with your roommates and I'll talk about this a little bit in that too but we have like hall style dorms where it's like it's kind of set up like a hotel so you each just have your own room and then there's like two bathrooms at the end of each end of the hallway so that you guys share that it's like communal living down there and so I lived in a suite style I lived in Carroll which is one of the tri towers it's right on the center of main campus and I would recommend living in one of the tri towers I really liked that so my suite style was like we had five different rooms in this little pod and there were like four pods on each floor and then each pod had their own bathroom that we shared and then down downstairs we had like a kitchen and like a hanging out area so that's kind of like how the suite style works then we have apartments but you have to be an upperclassman to live in the apartments that are on campus which a lot of people live in the off-campus apartments which are still on campus they're just not through campus like you're not paying for it through NC State if that makes sense I live in Wolf Ridge it's on Centennial where the textile and engineering classes are because it's the on-campus apartment complex and I use my financial aid to pay for it and I know that I could get it to live in an off-campus apartment complex but it would be a little more complicated so I just prefer living on campus so that I'm paying for everything with my financial aid in one place so whenever it comes to applying for your dorm you might want to pick living with somebody that you already know or you might want to try to find somebody that you can room with or you might want to go with just a complete random what I did freshman year was there was like a Facebook group that I could go into for my school and meet other freshmen that were incoming and we would post something like hi my name is Olivia I cheered and played tennis in high school and I'm gonna be in fashion textile management um my favorite towers are blah 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 like this is where I hope to live like blah 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 like little things about yourself you can read what the other people wrote and like reference that to figure out what you're gonna write 
but that's what I did to find my roommate I found her on Facebook and then whenever we applied for living we applied to have each other and then we ranked three of our favorite like dorms that we wanted to live in so whenever you do that they prioritize your roommate as a freshman they prioritize the roommate that you chose so you're most likely to end up with that roommate you just might not end up with your first choice of your dorm it might be your second or your third but you guys will probably more than likely end up together so whenever you're a freshman I don't feel like it's really that competitive but once you start doing things like applying for housing trying to get parking passes figuring out your schedule it gets really really competitive at least at NC State I mean it probably is like this at any school but since we're so big it is so competitive and it's so hard to get what you want like you have to be on top of it so like whenever I was reapplying for my apartment this year I had a friend that I wanted to live with me but since she lived off campus her sophomore year NC State wouldn't let her just come back on her junior year and we all have different like time slots that we apply for things in so your time slot is given to you based on how many credit hours you have so right whenever your time slot opens for things like enrolling for classes getting parking like i said or applying for housing you want to do it that day that minute because otherwise things will fill up so like i said i am in the apartment that i wanted to be in this year but i didn't get to live with my friend because it was just too competitive and she couldn't get in same thing with parking so as a freshman parking on campus we are only allowed to have parking in the residential storage lot which is on Centennial campus I think you can also now get a parking pass on Lee's lot if you live in Lee but I lived in Carroll and the only parking place that we were allowed to have is residential storage lot which is over on Centennial campus and it was so competitive we had to be up and on the site at 8 o'clock typing in the information and paying for it you have to pay for it straight off the bat you can't use financial aid for that and I had to do that again this year applying for my own apartment parking I was waitlisted for my apartment parking last year so like this year I was on it and I was sitting there watching the website crash for 30 minutes and then I finally got it and thank god I'm not waitlisted because last year I was so paranoid that I was going to end up without my car and be like stranded on campus which as a freshman it's not a big deal to not have your car because like you need that time to like be in the college constantly and like you have all your meal plans there like you're fine as a freshman I think but me personally I need to be able to get out and go around town for like for the blog and stuff I like to go and take photos but I also like to just be able to go and do things and not have to sit in my room all the time so for me I'm like I have to have my car so that was very stressful because that's so competitive and it's the same way with classes so I'm gonna do a whole video about how to survive college classes it'll come after this one probably so for everything that you're worried about with classes I definitely recommend that you check out that video because it's like 30 minutes long and I go into all the detail I just want to touch on how competitive enrolling for classes is because it just goes along with how competitive everything else can be so for me me whenever I was a sophomore I had a junior standing because I have a little more credits than a sophomore would typically have so you would think that that's pretty good but apparently all the other sophomores my age have even more of a junior standing than me so they had their enrollment like a few days before mine so whenever I went to enroll in all my classes that were in my car and click submit it was like they were all full so I had to go and I had to change everything and go back to my advisor so just making sure that you're on time to sign up for things like that is really important and just have it in your head that things might not be exactly how you want them to be but like it's college like I like I'm like I'm not living with the girl that I wanted to live with but it's only a short period of time it's not the end of the world I'm gonna meet new people I will probably make new friends and I'm excited to meet new people so just know that like it's not the end of the world but things are really competitive and you need to be on the website and doing what you need to do on the day you need to do it so another thing that I wanted to talk about is busing at NC State so if you're living on a big campus you might have to take the bus especially at NC State if you're in engineering or college textiles you will be taking the bus because like I said we have two separate campuses one is engineering and college textiles and the other is everything else I have to consider things like how long it's gonna take me to get from Centennial campus to main campus whenever I'm making my schedule and I need at least 30 minutes probably 45 would be nice but at least 30 minutes to get in between the campus and have time to get there on time and everything so the way our bus system works is you just get on it's just free it's free to all it's free to the public anybody that wants to get on the bus can get on the bus we have an app I'll show you guys it's called rider I think it's called translock it looks like that right there 
All right, it won't focus, but I'll insert a screenshot of it. We have an app, and basically you can go on the app and type in where you want to go, and it'll tell you what buses to take where. But once you're getting familiar with the buses and the bus stops and everything, it'll become easier. You'll know what bus you're waiting for, what bus will take you where. Like, I'm always waiting for the 8 or the 4 or the 3. Preferably the 3 because it'll take me right to my apartment, but you'll get used to it. But until then, you can look at the map of where the buses go. You can type in where you want to go, and it'll tell you which buses would be easiest to take and you can do things like look at when the bus will get there how many minutes away it is stuff like that so there's an app and it's really helpful but our bus system is just free you just get on it and go some schools you might have to present your ID or something but ours is just get on it and go oh and that goes into my friend Kaylee on Instagram was asking if is the campus really as bad as it seems with all the walking because NC State is huge and I will say I was back there like last week and hiking across that campus was exhausting to me like I forgot how much walking I have to do at school but whenever you're in the flow of things you'll get used to it really quickly you're just concerned about getting to your next class and you won't even flinch once you're like two weeks into it about having to walk across campus you'll get used to it at first it is like oh my gosh this is so far but like at the end of the day I don't really it doesn't affect me that much like I wouldn't not choose NZ State over it you know what I mean so going along with this you guys were worried about being able to find your classes which I feel like is a valid concern I always feel like that as well so what I do is I get out the NC State map and I figure out where each of my classes are before I try to go and look for them. And then once I have it like mapped out and planned, I try to go and walk the campus and find them specifically so that I know exactly where I have to go and I won't be like late on the first day or running around or anything. And I feel like that's a really great tactic to use. Also about classes in general, y'all were concerned about like the size of classes and different things like that. So at NC State at least, you'll have classes that are really big classes, like classes such as like physics is one of the ones that I had a really big class of people in and like some communication classes. Like you'll have some classes where you're in this huge auditorium and like the teacher will not know your name. You might not even know his name. You guys will n probably not communicate. It'll just be like a huge room that you're just sitting in and listening to. But then you'll also have more personal classes for your major probably like I do for my FTM classes they're pretty small and I feel pretty comfortable like speaking out loud I know the teacher they know who I am also my journalism minor classes we have a pretty small class as well and we can just sit and talk to each other so you'll get both sides of it and I don't really think that having a big class is that bad necessarily but I do prefer my FTM classes but I feel like that's just because of the subject I just prefer that subject over like physics and stuff like that but it probably is helpful to be able to communicate with your teacher a lot easier and like work in a smaller setting for some people if you're struggling with a big class I just recommend asking about like office hours and like tutoring sessions and going to things like that I did that my freshman year and I found that very helpful I just thought of something else and it's a little thing but the laundry People are always like, don't you need like quarters and like don't you have to pay for the laundry and at NC State the laundry is free at least. I don't know if it's like that at other schools you might have to use your card or something but at NC State it's completely free and it's located in the dorms at the bottom of your like residence hall. Yeah but you don't want to like leave your stuff in the laundry down there in those residence halls because people might take it. I mean you'll just have to fill out the situation but... I wouldn't recommend leaving like super valuable things in the wash for a long period of time or overnight or anything like that because it is like public and anybody can access it so that's how the laundry is but let me just tell you once you get to college you're gonna be avoiding doing the laundry as much as possible and re-wearing things until they're not re-wearable anymore because the laundry takes forever and you don't realize it whenever you're at your house and it can just run while you do other things but whenever you're like sitting down there with it you realize it takes forever but they have like a study lounge near our laundry room in Carroll at least so it's kind of helpful so I feel like that is kind of the general thing that you would be worried about starting into college right off the bat if you have anything else I'm gonna do a answering your questions and concerns video so leave those down below but I also also just wanted to touch on internships and study abroad these are really good opportunities that I feel like you need to because these are really good opportunities that I feel like you need to, but these are really good opportunities that I feel like you need to take while you're in college so first let's talk about internships because I actually had an internship this summer I did a video about how I got my internship and I hope to do one recapping my internship as well so make sure to subscribe to see that but you can get credit for internships while you're in college you can do unpaid internships or paid internships for credit so then you'll get like 
a school credit for it and you won't have to take a class and they highly recommend that you do that I think that college is a great time to get some work experience with bigger brands or at a higher level by being their intern you know working for the inside side of a brand rather than just working their retail setting you get what I'm saying so looking for internships starting your sophomore year is a good idea going to the career fair and stuff is helpful but it might not be as helpful with finding internships because they're mostly looking for students that are about to graduate and are looking to be hired so you really don't want to go in there and like waste their time by just saying like hi I'm a freshman and I just want to know about internships like some of our classes made us do that and I absolutely hated it so I recommend like googling the different types of internships that you're looking for and seeing what comes up that's what I did and like I said you can get credit one time if you want to and then you can also do an internship for pay or whatever but I think it's really helpful for your career to take those experiences while you're still in college and aren't expected to have much experience so the other thing that I wanted to talk about is study abroad which I will be talking about more on my channel because I hope to study abroad myself this coming spring but I just want you guys to keep an open mind about it and to research about it whenever you're going into college because it's another really great opportunity that you might not get again you know it's a good time to explore the world and still be doing what you're supposed to be doing for that time frame you know without taking like a gap year or anything like you can still be on track to graduating by studying abroad I recommend this because it's most likely gonna cost the same amount as it costs to go to college anyways or if you're like an out-of-state student or something the tuition at the colleges abroad are most of the time cheaper than out-of-state tuition is so make sure that you're looking into study abroad and like what's available on your campus and making sure that you're saving the classes that you should be saving for your study abroad and just ask your advisor you'll probably have like an intro class or I know at orientation they had like a presentation about it that you could go to so you might want to do that as well but I just want you guys to keep that in your mind and take advantage of that opportunity because it's a really great opportunity all right so that's all I have to share with you guys today I'm sorry that it took me a minute a few times Lily kept barking and I just had to keep repeating the same sentence over and over until she stopped if you guys have any other questions or concerns or anything that you want to see from me during this back to school season please leave that down below and I will make sure to feature it in an upcoming video so make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss those videos and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time bye guys